Who is going to win on this historic card? Hill versus Alex. He had Jamal Hill on the podcast, and he said that he's going to knock him out. And we know what Alex wants to do. Alex wants to exchange with him and knock him out as well. Gaethje versus Max. It's very hard to make a pick, but I'm going to go ahead and go up. Charles Oliver coming back, taking on Rising Star Armand. <laughs> this card is stacked from top to bottom. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Ooh-wee! It is our favorite time of the week, which is fight predictions. Here we go. Big card, big card, big card. I mean, this card is stacked from top to bottom. I mean, as I'm looking at the card right now on my laptop, we got Figueredo taking on Cody Gombrandt. I mean, whew, that is a banger. This is two former world champion. Figueredo, flyweight champion. Cody Gombrandt, bantamweight champion. Now, this one is one of my favorite fights on the card because there's a storyline into it. Figueredo coming up to bantamweight where he was a champion at flyweight, but I think he was too big for that weight class. The weight cuts would draw him out. It would drain him so he wouldn't have the cardio he would have when he fights at 135. Now, Cody, he's had some ups and down. He went down to 125, got knocked out by Kai Kai France. Now he's back to his normal weight class at bantamweight. Now, who is going to win this fight? My gut is telling me that Figueredo is going to be able to get close and knock out Cody because... Figueredo has knocked out uh, Josman Davides. He's one of the heavy hitters in the flyweight division, which I think that transfers very well to 135 because Cody's not a very big guy. He's made 125 before, right? So, and also Cody, he's had some, he's been dropped in the past. He's been dropped by TJ Dillashaw. Um, he got rocked by Kai Kai France. And Figueredo is not going to be scared to get inside the void to be able to land a knockout shot. So for that one, I love Cody Gombrett. I think he can get the job done. He can. But I think he's going to have a harder time if he stands and tries to bang with Figueredo. Because I wouldn't stand with Figueredo. I would be very dynamic. I would wrestle. I would kick. I would clinch. Because he does have that X factor, which is that power. So we're going to have to go with, uh, he's going to be mad as hell at me, which is okay. We can talk about it when we see each other. I'm going to have to go with Figueredo. Now, next up, we got Bobby Green taking on Jim Mother. Miller. Now, Jim Miller has been on UFC 100, UFC 200. Now, he lands on UFC 300. Now, Bobby Green. Now, I love Bobby Green because he's very good with the strikes, beautiful submissions, and he is very good at controlling that distance and looking inside the void and countering people when they try to come across the void. Jim Miller, what do I need to say? He is probably one of the most well-rounded guys on this fight card. He has been in the game for a very, very long time. He does have the experience going in his corner because he's spot almost forever so with that one i'm gonna have to go with uh i like my options on price picks we'll go over that a little bit later but i'm gonna have to go with i'm gonna go with my man bobby green i think he's too good he's too quick he has that boxing and he knows what he does very well and you know the thing that about Bobby Green is that he has been very very active when he is fighting and he's looking to always Get people frustrated so when they come into the void, he's gonna catch them with the right hand. Now, Jim, not saying Jim can't get it done. Jim has more tools to win the fight with his grappling, his, his stand up, and also his wrestling. So at the end of the day, it's gonna see who can execute the game plan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this video is sponsored by Price Picks. Now, at the time of filming this, they just dropped it. And I like what I see, ladies and gentlemen. All you gotta do is go to your app store, whether you're an Android user or iPhone user, download Price Picks, and when you do that, make sure you use my promo code MIGHTY. They will match up to $100 of your deposits. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, we're not looking at it. Already, they give you a free one. They give you a freebie. They got Justin Gaethje that he lands one strike. Okay, you guys have all played bingo. It's just like bingo. You get that free square right in the middle. Same thing. Price Picks is giving you guys a favor, giving you one free square because if Justin Gaethje doesn't land one shot, I'll be very, 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 very shocked. Okay, so right there, I like that one. One free pick me up with the Justin Gaethje. After that, you got Bobby Green taking on Jim Miller. They think he's gonna land 75 and a half strikes. I don't think he's gonna land that much. I think he's just gonna go out there and land the two piece combination and probably put Jim Miller down, or Jim Miller's gonna put him away with a beautiful submission. Another one that we're liking, Justin Gaethje, 115 and a half strikes. That is a lot. 
it is a five round fight, but I don't see Max Holloway getting hit that much. I, I truly don't see that. So I'm going to go with less on that as well. Now, the beautiful thing about price picks, it's not all about significant strikes. It also has fight time. It also has takedowns. Let's jump over to the takedown bracket. They say that Kayla Harris is going to land two and a half takedowns. Against Holly Holm, that's a hard one because I feel if Kayla Harrison gets her down once or twice, I think she's gonna ground upon her and submit her and Holly Holm can't get back to her feet. So I'm gonna go with less with that as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you wanna get yourself into action and make these fights more exciting, go to Price Picks, download it, use my promo code MIGHTY, they'll match up to $100 of your deposits. Just make sure you make the right picks at the right place, which is Price Picks. Next, we got Jalen Turner taking on Hanato Moicano. Money. I like to call him money because he's always about money after he wins his fight. So I am going to have to go with Jalen Turner. I've worked with Jalen Turner for maybe about two minutes at the Jackson podcast. And I already love what I saw because he understands distance. He can fight from Southpaw to Orthodox. He is a big, big body for that weight class. What is that? That's that lightweight division. Big boy for that division, and I think he's still young. He's still growing, and I'm not saying money can't win either, but if I had to pick my bet, I'm a bet on black, baby. That's what I do. All right, we're going to keep it going. Now, next up, we got Holly Holm taking on Kayla Harrison. Now, this is also an interesting matchup because you have Holly Holm, who is the former bantamweight champion of the world in the women's division. She knocked out Ronda Rousey with that beautiful head kick, made her jaw Disalliance, which you're gonna eat apples. <clears throat> She's taking on the Olympic champion, two, two-time Olympic champion in judo, Kayla Harrison. Now, the biggest thing is Kayla Harrison is coming down to 135. That is going to be the kicker. Now, I know Kayla Harrison has the grappling advantage. If Kayla Harrison get across the void and be able to get her hand on Holly Holm, we can see Kayla Harrison either GNP, ground and pound, or we can see her get a beautiful submission off because Holly Holmes' weakness, and it's always been in her whole entire career, is her grappling ability. Not saying that she can't grapple, but she tends to stay away from that when she fought Misha Tate. When she fought <clears throat> Ronda Rousey, she won nothing to do with it. Granted, she is a better striker than Ronda Rousey, and she might be, I will go ahead and say, I feel comfortable saying, I think she's a better striker than Kayla Harrison, but Kayla Harrison has the advantage when it goes to the ground and when it's in the clinch. If I have to pick and choose, I'm gonna go with Kayla Harrison because I feel she's gonna have the opportunity to shine under their bright lights. She's been waiting for this opportunity. And I love a person who can take advantage of somebody on the ground when it comes to the grappling and jujitsu exchange. Now, the biggest thing with Kayla Harrison is that she fought in the PFL at 155. Now when she's coming to the UFC, they don't have a 145. Well, they did have a 145. That was kind of Amanda Nunes' division and JDR. But they don't have a 155. So she's dropping two weight classes, 20 pounds, to make 135. The big question is, how is she going to make the weight and how is she going to feel when she goes out to perform? And it's a good thing that she's going against a former champion because it's only a three-round fight. It's not a main event. So that's an, another thing that we're going to have to see when she gets in there with Holly Holm. And then after that, we got my boy, the Funk Master, Aljamay Sterling taking on Calvin Qatar. Now, this is a very interesting matchup. Another beautiful storyline that I am following very closely is Aljamay Sterling going up to 145, which I feel is more his natural weight because he was the 135 pound champion. And I believe he's had one of the most, he has defended the title the most at 135. But he wants to give his boy Marab the opportunity to fight Sugar Sean on Mali. So he's going up to 145. He's taking on the heavy hitter, Calvin, ranked number eighth in the division. Now, Calvin is a very, very good boxer. I give the grappling exchange to Aljo. The biggest thing that Aljo needs to do is he needs to go back to what he's very good at, and that's being the backpack. I felt when Aljamay Sterling was embracing the backpack, I'm going to come across the void, I'm going to get on your back, I'm going to use my long, lanky, ashy-ass legs, lock up the body triangle, put you on your stomach, and ground and pound you. That's when Aljamay is his most dangerous. But if Aljo stands to the edge of the void, trying to play kickboxing and boxing with Calvin, we can see my good friend, Aljamay Sterling, get knocked out. So when it comes to Aljamay Sterling taking on Calvin, I'm going to go with my buddy, Aljamay Sterling. He understands that he needs to close the distance, get inside the void, make Calvin make a mistake, get on that man's back, and ride his ass to school like Jan Sport Backpack in middle school. All right, going on to the next fight. 
We have Yudi taking on Alexander. I don't know much about uh, Alexander, but I do know much. I do know a lot about <clears throat> Yudi. I just broke down his fight with uh, Alex and you know, I broke down his fights in the past. The biggest thing for him, he's gonna go out there and be dynamic, right? He has a very unique style, not a very smooth rhythm, which kind of breaks up the what everybody's used to training. He's good on the ground, he's good in his, on his feet. I'm gonna have to go with Judy. Don't know much about the other gentleman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was just the prelims. Now we're at the main card. We have Bo Nickel, the rising star, the wrestling background, taking on Cody. I don't see anybody taking out Bo Nickel anytime soon, but at the end of the day, it is a mixed martial arts fight. Anything can happen. People always wonder, what makes Bo Nickel so special? It's his pedigree in wrestling. He's been competing his whole entire life in wrestling. He's been able to transfer it over into mixed martial arts. Now, last time he fought, he ended up knocking him out, which I didn't think he would be able to do that, but he did. So he's always surprised me. And I'm sure on this night, he on Saturday night, he's probably gonna surprise me again by taking out Cody. Now, whoo -hoo 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 -hoo! Charles Oliver coming back, taking on rising star, Armand. Now, I love Charles Oliveira. I think he is one of the best fighters to ever do it in a lightweight division. We have fought in the same card together. He can fight on the feet. He can fight on the ground. The biggest thing I love about Charles is that he is not scared to exchange, which is also his biggest strength and downfall because he will keep a pressure on you. He stays in the void. He fights. He fights in the clinch and he has been dropped many, many times in the past. Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, uh, Islam Makachev because he's in the void exchanging. But the thing that some of these guys didn't do was follow him to the ground, which I believe Armand will do that. I believe Armand is not worried about his ground game. He believes in his ground game and he saw that when Islam dropped him and when Dustin dropped him and when Justin Gaethje dropped him, two of them didn't follow him to the guard. Now when those two didn't follow him to the guard, what ended up happening? Charles got back to his feet and got an opportunity to begin a shootout and he won that shootout and he followed them to the ground and submitted them. But when Islam dropped him, Islam followed him to the ground, passed his guard and ended up submitting him. So we know Charles is gonna get dropped. It's likely to say that. <clears throat> Will Armand follow him to the ground? If he does, it could be a long night for Charles. If Charles gets the opportunity to exchange and bang, and he gets dropped, he gets another opportunity to stand up and bang again. We can see Charles Oliveira dropping Armand and falling to the ground and submitting Armand. Now, who do I have in this fight? I'm gonna go with my boy Charles Oliveira. I love his fighting style. I tell everybody all the time, if I have to pick one of the athletes right now in mixed martial arts or who I wanna model my kids after and what they need to do, I would pick Charles Oliveira. Only thing I think Charles Oliveira, his weakness is that he makes wrong decisions. But the way he pressures, the way he fights in the clinch, the way he exchanges on the feet, the way his grappling is so dangerous, people don't wanna go there. I don't like that style. Okay, now let's go to the next card. Another motherfucking banger. Justin Gagey taking on Max, the blessed Holloway. We just had Max Holloway on the podcast. He's saying he's feeling real good going to this fight. He's taking the time to put on the weight the correct way, not the wrong way, the correct way. Now, Max has been in multiple fights. He is probably going to go down as one of the goats in the featherweight division. He's beat Jose Aldo multiple times. The only losses he's had at 145 is against uh, Alex Volkanovski. He did lose to Dustin Poirier in the very, very beginning of his career, but Max is one of the best to ever do it. His striking is very good. He is T-Rex arms in the division, but I still feel that he should be able to outstrike a lot of people with his footwork. Now, the thing that Max doesn't usually do is he doesn't use his knees and he doesn't throw any kicks. He doesn't fight any clinch, right? He likes to stand out 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 outside the void, throw the boxing combinations. He claims to be the best boxer in the UFC. Now, taking on Justin Gaethje. A lot of people don't realize when Justin Gaethje was in PFL, he was a world champion. And what he did to beat a lot of his opponents was he had a very, very nasty leg kick. He even used that leg kick against Habib and made Habib start wobbling. And then Habib forced a takedown, got in a grappling exchange. Habib ended up choking him out. Now, Justin Gaethje has fought the best of the best of the division. He's fought Dustin Poirier, which he just knocked Dustin Poirier out. He's fought Eddie Alvarez. He's fought Charles Oliveira. Now these two gentlemen are meeting to fight for the BMF, baddest motherfucker on the planet, which only a select few people get to do that, ladies and gentlemen. Let me remind you. 
Now, how's this fight going to go down? Is Max Holloway going to be dynamic? Throw kicks, throw knees, get in the clinch, wrestle. Make it a nasty MMA fight. If he tends to stay on the outside and use his boxing, it's going to be hard because Justin Gaethje's got a great jab. Great cross, too. He has a great jump of left hook. That's where the X factor is going to go, is who is going to who's going to execute the game plan and what are their game plans? Grant, it's going to be boxing. I broke down uh, Justin Gaethje's fight. I broke down Max Holloway's fight. It's very hard to make a pick, but I'm going to go ahead and go with my boy, Max Holloway. The biggest thing with this fight is Max is taking on another good striker, right? I feel Max has done the right things to get his body ready for this, this fight. He fought bigger guys. He fought Dustin Poirier at 155, but he also took that fight on six-week notice. But for him to take this fight with Justin Gaethje, he had the opportunity to put the weight on. And it's just a backup. I, I can see it as a back-and-forth fight. Um, I, I just, I, I'm going my boy, Max. I'm going my boy, Max. And it's not that I'm down to him. It's just, I know this is going to be a very, very, very tough fight. This, this is probably be the fight of the night right here because they're both so damn skilled and they both do a good job of making, just making it in a fight. And we'll see what happens. In a co-main event, you got Wei Li taking on Yan. Now, this one, I believe Wei Li is probably one of the best ever doing in that division. You know, she did get knocked out by Rose Amanuyas, but Rose is a thug. And I think she did a good job catching her when she came in there. And Wei Li's had those battles with Joanna Jacek. So I don't see anybody being beating Wei Li anytime soon. I'm going to go with Wei Li. Now, brings us to the main event. I know, I know. It's a very, very big card. It's pretty stacked top to bottom. Main event. <laughs> Jamal Hill taking on Alex. Now, before we get on breaking this fight down, I want to apologize to everybody in the comments. Okay, just so you guys know, I was raised by deaf mother. So I don't enunciate all my words or names correctly. How I see it is how I say it. I see it as Piera. That's how I see it. But you know what? I'm not going to say his name anymore. I'm going to call him Alex or Potan. Just so I can get you guys off my fucking back like a fucking monkey. Okay, now let's break down the fight. He had Jamal Hill on the podcast. And he said his own words that he's going to knock him out. And yes, I did laugh. You know why I laugh? Because that is the hardest way, I believe, to beat Alex. You're talking about a gentleman who has stand and bang with Izzy. You're talking about a gentleman who has an extensive background and fighting the best of the best in kickboxing. Now, if I was to fight Alex, I wouldn't stand with him. I would get him in a clinch, take him down to wrestle and submit him. But Jamal Hill said he's gonna knock his ass out. And he go come out to everybody who says he ain't gonna do it. So. We already know what Jamal Hill's game plan is. Jamal Hill has beaten his coach, which is Glover Teixeira. Jamal Hill's not as scared to exchange. If Jamal Hill does not check that lead leg kick that Alex is so damn good at, he's gonna take away Al uh, he's gonna take away Jamal Hill's mobility because Alex is so good on the feet that he stands up super high and he throws that low kick. He throws that low kick. It's a calf kick. It's not a, uh, it's not to the thigh. It's not your traditional, uh, you know, Muay Thai kick. He kicks the calf. He kicks that, it fucking hurts, okay? He hasn't kicked me, but I've been kicked by Adrian Marias the same way. If Jamal Hill doesn't, you know, address that, it's gonna be a, even a longer night. Now, when you try getting a shootout with somebody, the opportunity of you getting knocked out goes up higher. But if Jamal Hill can be athletic, make Alex miss, make him guess where Jamal is going to be, his chances go up higher. But Alex has fought the best of the best in kickboxing. You're going to see Alex go to the body. You're going to see Alex circle. Alex is going to put his, he's not going to put his back against the, the cage. You saw he did that when he fought Sean Strickland. He circles very well. He does a very good job of fighting people who pressure him. Now, here's the difference. Jamal Hill is longer or if not the same size as Alex, right? When he fought Sean Strickland, I believe Alex was probably the bigger gentleman. So Alex does very good at fighting people who are athletic, like Izzy Adesanya. He does a good job of fighting people who come forward. He does a good job fighting people who go backwards. He fought somebody who was dynamic like Yuri. So it's a very interesting fight to call. Now, here comes down, who am I gonna go with? It's, it's a very hard one. My gut's not telling me either way because I see one who's so hell bent on knocking him out. And we know what Alex wants to do. Alex wants to exchange with him and knock him out as well. 
So you have two gentlemen who are trying to knock each other out. Not one's going to try to be more dynamic when he has it in his tool set. He's hell-bent on knocking him out. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going we're to head, we're, you know what? We're going to go ahead and go with Jamal Hill. He seems he has conviction and try to prove us all wrong, right? He has conviction. And I'm going to jump on this. I'm going to jump on this conviction train with him and ride it out and see how it goes. So, I'm not saying, you know, Alex can't knock him out. But, you know, when somebody's like, hey, I'm going to knock him out. Hey, fuck it. I'm going to jump on your back, too. Let's see, if you, let's see if you can knock him out. So, I'm going to go with Jamal Hill on the last one. Shout out to Price Picks for sponsoring this video. Now, it's a stack card from top to bottom, right? Big, big, big night for the UFC, not just for them, but for the athletes. I mean, any one of these fights could be a main event in any pay-per-view. The Cody, the Cody fight, the Max Holloway fight, the Aljamain Sterling fight, the Hill, the Alex fight. I mean, I'm super excited. Make sure you guys come back here. I'm going to do my live instant reaction, give you guys my thoughts on it. And also, following after the fights, we'll do the void breakdown to break down all of these athletes where they did very well. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheer! Well, damn.